this record, it was a really long and arduous waiting for both of us. We, we, we first talked about doing this back in 2006 um, on a Dress and Balls tour in Germany when I like finally plucked up the courage to ask Edward, who was my hero, um, could we maybe do something? Um, and, you know, he was doing lots of legendary pink dots, and I was doing lots of Dresden balls. And, it, and, you know, years and years went by, and we would sort of see each other and occasionally exchange emails, and we talked about doing this record. And finally, after a couple aborted attempts of, like, getting our schedules together, we finally, finally carved the time out. And I was, I was pregnant, I was seven months pregnant when we finally got together in London. And Neil and I had rented an Airbnb in downtown London so Neil could write and have meetings and be Neil Gaiman. And, <laughs> uh, and, and Edward lives about an hour outside of London and I was going to just take the train every day and then occasionally stay at our, over at Edward's house. And the first day we got together, it was really exciting and we, you know, talked about ideas and started making lists and writing things down and um, Edward showed me the lyrics for the song that was to become the Jack of Hands and I wrote the music for it and like in that first day we got so excited and we got so much done. And I went home and um, my best friend was really sick at the time, Anthony, and I know a lot of you guys know the story of Anthony, he was like my mentor who raised me. And he had cancer at the time, but he it looked like he was beating it, fighting it, but it was like one of those terrible cancer bottles that was off and on and off and on. And the second day of recording, I got on the train to go to Edwards. And while I was on the overground, my phone rang. And a mutual friend of me and Anthony's back in Boston said, you have to come home because he's going to die. And I, and I knew he was right. I could just hear him in his voice and they were on their way to the hospital, and I was like, I have to get home if I'm going to be with him when he dies. And so here I was, like, having only really worked with Edward for a day, and I showed up at the train station, like, seven months pregnant, weeping. And, um, he was really nice about it. <laughs> Hugged me. And, and it was one of those weird moments in life where it was so, it was like a movie, it was so dramatic. I was like, I can't even go to your house. I have to get back on the train right now so I can get to the airport so I can hopefully make it back to Boston by the time he dies. And Edward was also so British about it. He was like, yeah, I'm not. <laughs> and I, I was so, you know, I was so touched already by like, how our collaboration had gone and how good it was, and I promised him I would make it back within a year. I got on a plane, spent the whole plane ride thinking that Anthony was probably going to die while I was in the air, but he didn't. He died two days later, and I got to be there, and we all got to be there. We got all got to be there together. My fetus got to be there. That was great. <laughs> and I was like, I have this fetus, and this person's dying. If anything exists, and I don't really believe it does, Maybe this dead person can come hang out in this penis, penis, and then we can all be together again. Uh, maybe that's happened. I don't know. Um, so this is a song that I wrote about Anthony. It's called Machete. <laughs> Anthony was a Buddhist. Who killed flies and mosquitoes? I always thought he's a fucking hypocrite. He's also a Buddhist who collected knives and guns, and I thought that was stupid too. This is, this is a song about that and how irritated I was at when he would joke about leaving me his weapons collection, having taught me all about pacifism and Buddhism. Because he's kind of an asshole.
would be a good time to, to thank um, all of the people on Patreon who supported this record. Woo!